at the start it was for like bloggers and chefs which you sort of laugh at now really but i would say only fans didn't really get a name for itself until lockdown it was random like no one really knew about it and then as soon as it got a name for itself 2019 2020 and my earnings massively increased from going from 500 to a, a grand to going to 10 grand 20 grand 30 grand what's your thoughts on kind of being wealthy or rich however you want to call it i don't class myself that no um, right i'm sure yeah, you, yeah. everyone i speak to yeah i know wants to, i know right? i get it <laughs> people kind of what i mentioned earlier which is oh these girls are probably just taking a couple of photos couple of videos post it on of and they just make all this money ladies and gentlemen welcome to today's video this video is very 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 special um, if you're somebody looking to get started in the OnlyFans industry or somebody already existing in the industry itself, whether you're a creator or an agency, this video is going to be absolutely packed with value. Uh, some really interesting stories, I'm sure, as well. And um, I'm here joined with a very, very special guest. Um, now, my guest here is Bronzy. She has been in industry for six years. Um, OnlyFans was started in 2016. And uh, literally one year later, Bronzy went ahead and created her account. And she's one of the first creators uh, on the actual platform. So I thought, who better to get on this actual podcast than Bronzy herself? Um, she's absolutely done incredible stuff online. She's gained massive uh, amount of followers online and she's made a good amount of money as well, which I'm sure we can uh, go into kind of her lifestyle and stuff later on. Um, just for some quick context for anybody who's maybe watching this for the first time and doesn't know who I am, just really, really quickly, my name is Marcus Hustle and I run an agency, an OnlyFans uh, management agency, and we also coach people on how to get started as well. But this podcast is not about me. Um, so we'd love to uh, hear about your story, Bronte. Um, so just to start off, I guess we should always start kind of at the beginning, right? So how did you get into all this? So I actually wasn't within the industry to start off with. I have always done dancing and they're very close industries together. Um, so I was at dance college and then I went on to dance uni. And dance is one of those things that it, it's, it's amazing, it's such fun, but I personally find the money's not there that I wanted to achieve and that I wanted to live a certain lifestyle. Um, so I went and saw obviously OnlyFans online. I didn't actually know what it was. Um, at the start, it was for like bloggers and chefs, which you sort of laugh at now really. Um, I went and created a platform on there and I actually started posting like my dancing clips and dancing videos and stuff because I didn't know what it was for. Um, and then I started it, started posting daily and so on. And then I sort of got a little bit bigger as the platform grew. Um, but I would say OnlyFans didn't really get a name for itself until lockdown. So, 2020. yeah, 2020. Um, and that's really massively when it picked up. Mm -hmm. um, but pre-COVID, I started doing glamour modelling. Um, I'd done a lot of magazines. Good and bad things came out of them. And I sort of thought, I want to take my own content into my own hands. Because with glamour modelling into magazines and so on, it's not you that owns the content. It's not you that can publish those pictures. It's, it, it goes out of your hand as soon as you walk away from that shoot. Um, and I personally had a lot of sort of situations that happened and it got taken out of my control. And with OnlyFans, you can have control at all times. So that's one thing that I liked about the platform. So I started then posting my glamour modeling pictures and started taking more pictures at home because at the end of the day, girls wanna feel sexy and taking pictures of you, it makes you feel good. So I started doing that. Um, and then it sort of just picked up from there really. Mm -hmm. Okay, so dancing. Yes. was initially the first thing and that yes. was just a hobby i'm assuming right because yes. you loved it yes and what kind of dancing was it by the way i done commercial and contemporary dancing cool cool uh and then from there on you found out about only fans yes but you wasn't it was just posting kind of behind the scenes of yeah, dancing behind the scenes and sort of clips of my glamour modeling pictures which were at the time just lingerie right right interesting and you mentioned as well that back then this is 2017 i'm assuming mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. um back then kind of the biggest thing on OF was kind of bloggers and yeah, different and things, yeah, right? Yeah. Interesting. It wasn't so much explicit content as No, like, like no one really knew about the platform. That's why I was maybe making like I don't know, five hundred dollars a month. Yeah, which yeah. what can that really pay for or do? Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how was that by the way? So um that's kind of when you're starting out, obviously, right? Yes. Um, and at that point when you're starting out in twenty seventeen, you're still doing the glamour modeling, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, right? Mm -hmm. Um 
in terms of, and this is an interesting one, and I spoke to uh, Jess, we kind of mentioned her uh, just off camera. Yeah. Um, it's a different industry where OnlyFans, you have to bring the traffic and uh -huh. you, you are in charge of making your money. Yes. Whereas Glamour Modeling, I'm assuming they paid you on the spot. Yeah. Or, or right after. So with all the shoots that I've done, you can either go there and it's you do the shoot for free. You don't pay, they don't pay you. It's just sort of like a civil agreement because you walk away with some pictures, they walk away with the pictures. However, they own part of those images and they can do what they want with them. So they can sell them to a magazine, they can sell them to a paper and do really whatever they want with them, which I, at a very young age of 18, 19, I didn't like that. And I didn't necessarily know that they could do that. Mm -hmm. um, as I quickly found out that quite a few pictures had been put into a magazine, which I didn't feel comfortable with at all because of the explicity of them, basically. Because mm -hmm. there was a lot less rules of what could be posted in papers at that time compared to now. Yep. Um, whereas with OnlyFans, you can post what you want and it's all your images. Do you You're know what I mean? You're in charge of it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it's just much, it's much more of a comfortable platform to be on. I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot with a lot of girls that jump onto OnlyFans. One of the biggest things that they always say is like, I just feel one, I feel in charge of where, yeah. who's on there, who's watching it, etc. What yeah. am I posting? But then also one thing that you mentioned as well is a lot of girls, they get empowered from every girl wants to feel sexy and wants yeah, to feel exactly. hot, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's a lot of people that are watching this and I'm sure we're going to get tons of mixed audiences here, like people who um, maybe haven't even heard about OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably know what it is um, to obviously creators, etc. But a lot of people have different misconceptions about yeah. girls that are doing it or uh -huh. guys. Um, so I'd love to dive, dive into that later on in the podcast as well. Yeah. But first, I want to kind of uh, talk more about your journey, right? Mm -hmm. um, so cool. So you started um, OF in 2017, like you said. Yeah. Um, at what point, and by the way, when you started OnlyFans, it yeah. wasn't like you started and you thought, right, that's it. I'm just doing OnlyFans, yes, right? Yes, no, yeah. I was actually at dance uni, still studying and doing OnlyFans because I didn't really know what the platform was for. I didn't know how much money it would bring in or anything like that. Um, and then I stepped away from the dancing side um, due to friends that were further down the line in dancing and they really enjoyed it, but the money just wasn't there. So I didn't want to have to spend all this money at uni to then walk away in the same position. Um, Cause dancing is one of those things where it's all about your performance and what you can do, not necessarily about your qualifications. Mm -hmm. um, so I started pushing obviously OnlyFans further and then OnlyFans became more well known, mm -hmm. which was a benefit as such to the girls on it, such as myself, because at the end of the day, positive or negative, it's more traffic. However, if you're not sort of not strong minded, but if you can't look over comments like that, it would sort of defeat you as such. Right. So when you're starting out, I'm assuming you had a lot of mixed comments, right? Yes. I'm, I'm sure probably all creators get that online. Yeah. Uh, probably not even people that do OnlyFans, just anybody online that puts yeah. themselves out there, they get yeah. comments. Um, and I'm assuming that was like your first kind of encounter with both negative and positive comments, yes. right? Uh, more so negative, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Um, so how did, how did you feel about it? Did it kind of make you think twice at, at first? Yeah, at sort of the age of 19 to, I would say just below 21, I um, it was quite hard sort of jugg like juggling the comments thinking, is this actually worth it? Is this what I want to do? Like, mm -hmm. it is like what your parents used to say when you were younger, whatever you post online it is there. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you can't get rid of it. Um, and if that's something that you can't live with or want to live with later down the line when people are like, oh yeah, but what about your kids when they find out and they're old enough, like you've done that. So you've sort of got to live with the consequences of it. Mm -hmm. um, which at that age, I sort of was always second guessing, is this what I really wanna be mm -hmm. pushing to the walls to do? But mm -hmm. I wasn't too deep already, mm -hmm. but as soon as it hit sort of 2020, it started picking up quite consistently. Yep. And it, it was jumping very big jumps every single month. Um, and that's when I sort of thought, well, there's no point stopping now because if this is what I'm earning now, what am I gonna be earning in five years time when I'm X much older and so on? Yeah, and that's what boosted your confidence to actually yeah. pursue it, right? Yeah, when you sort of see the reward of it, you sort of think, well, who is this person even commenting under a fake user? Like they've got fake accounts. They can't even show who they actually are. Mm. And you're being nasty to someone like myself and other girls on the internet. But all we're trying to do is make a living and like 
be confident within ourselves do you know what I mean absolutely absolutely agree. and one, one thing I'm curious about as well this is kind of stripping it all the way back have you always been kind of entrepreneurial and always wanted more in life I would say that's one thing that has always been like a positive and a negative um I've never been like satisfied which is sad really because you should get to a point in your life and be happy at where you are but even with um like personal like body image and like personal growth and where you've got yourself there's always I've always got to a milestone and thought okay yeah but the next one now like I've never sort of sat back and thought wow like I've even little things like oh yeah wow I've done my personal best in the gym or oh wow I've done this achievement in dancing that I didn't think I could do and I've made now this much money like you sort of girls all girls within the industry should just sit back and realize like where how far they've come mm -hmm. um because you've done that all for yourself like no one else has helped you get there but you and it's such a hard industry to try and make you stand out because it's there's so many people doing it now correct i think and that's another misconception i'd love to talk about later on which is everyone thinks oh it's so easy yeah. this model just take some photos and they make all this money it's not <laughs> we'll talk about that later um do you now maybe like consciously or subconsciously think how far you've come like as any what well, maybe maybe the question should be what has recently happened or mm -hmm. you've achieved something where you mm -hmm. thought oh, God, dude, i'm proud of myself yeah here. i would find i say like quite a lot of my friends sort of um not ground me but make me realize like do you realize like how sort of well you've done do you realize like what that is and do you know what i mean like actually taking into concept of how well you've done and when you sort of sit back or say like on a Sunday evening when you're sort of sat in your house and you're you've just had a nice day with your family or a nice day with your friends or you've gone out on holiday and you just come back and you think this has all been funded by this and this is because of me so I'd say more so recently especially towards the end of last year I'm realizing more not that I've never not been grateful but that I'm actually realizing that I've created this life for myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, another concept that I always like to talk about this online mm -hmm. um, is we'll talk about kind of your lifestyle now, I guess, uh, soon as well. But I think once we do that, people that are watching and listening, they're going to be thinking, wow, like, you know, she's probably made all this money and like overnight success and all yeah. this stuff, right? But even in the intro, I said that you've started this in 2017. Mm -hmm. That is a very long time that you've been consistently working and putting content online and i'm sure it's not been easy right no, i'm sure I, there's been ups and downs yeah but you still persevered through it and you're still even today like we're in a podcast you know you're putting yourself out there yeah um and i think a lot of people forget that i think yeah. a lot of people will probably see maybe your online presence yeah. um and think wow you know she's she's got it easy she, yeah. you know she's been lucky yeah but there's been so much work um so i'd love to just really quickly just touch on kind of some ups and downs mm -hmm. in your journey yeah um don't mean to be like pessimistic and talk about downs and stuff, but I always <laughs> yeah. like to just share both sides of the story. Yeah, right? that's fine. Um, so um, carrying on kind of in terms of the timeline. So you've started um, 2017, mm -hmm. um, kind of fast forward it to about 2020 because that's when it really started picking yeah. up. Um, I'm assuming that most of the downs were probably around the uh, time 2017 to 2020 when yes, probably yeah. you're still in two minds about it. Yeah. Um, talk to us, uh, I guess some people as well, because one of the most common things that I hear online is like, oh, what does your friends and family think? Yeah. Um, if you don't mind kind of Yeah, no, sure. That. Like, I would say right at the start from 2017, really to like mid-2018, the platform wasn't well known. So you sort of just flew low. No one really knew about it. I had the link. You could actually have the OnlyFans link in your bio. Yeah. Not compared to now where it's like, oh, all my links. Like, you could literally bait put it there. <laughs> um, so that sort of shows how my new OnlyFans was um and it was fine like no one really knew about it obviously you had done the odd few stories but again it was it it was random like no one really knew about it and then as soon as it got a name for itself 2019 2020 and my earnings massively increased from going from 500 to a, a grand to going to 10 grand 20 grand 30 grand and it's something that one you can't not tell your family because you can't and two, like I told my friends from the get go, but it was much more noticeable. Like your cars are getting better, your lifestyle's getting better. Like it, you, some fairy hasn't just come along and sprinkled some dust over you. Um, so I 
personally, I've had friends who I've not lost due to OnlyFans, but they've had their certain opinions and people have their opinions behind your back or to your face. It doesn't matter what, if they say it to you or not. Um, but I think you know deep down who are your true friends. Um, and that's not to say you lose friends and you do gain friends from being within the industry because you suddenly got all this money. But if people are coming into your life when you're earning good money, you can tell if it's a true friendship or not, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Family-wise, I would say um, it's a very mixed opinions, like first family, like parents and so on. Um, they look now like they're proud um, and they say so. Um, however, I don't think any parent sort of wants to see their daughter or son a certain way online. However, at the end of the day, if I had a daughter or son and if they was doing something that made them happy or they enjoyed, be that going and playing football or taking nudes online, like they're happy within themselves and they're achieving the lifestyle that they are because of it. Do you know what I mean? Completely. I think one thing that I always think about as well is there's completely different generations as well, right? Yeah. Because mine and your parents, they didn't even have like no. social media. No, they didn't. Right? So, and then on top of that, I think what they don't understand, I mean, I'm sure they do now, but the money aspect of it, right? Like yes. we're not doing this for fun. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, I mean, kind of, but uh, you know, with that comes a great income. Yes, like, exactly. Lifestyle. Like I would say a lot of people jump on the platform because they see the money aspect. Yeah. However, like I wouldn't still be on the platform if I didn't enjoy it. Like you, you are sat there and you're talking to Gary and he's getting horny and you're getting horny and it's fun. Like it's, it's not fake. Like what you see on my profile is real. It's not made up fairy tale. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be there if I wasn't still enjoying the platform six years later. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas I think if you're doing something that you're not enjoying or you maybe are just doing for the money, then is it really worth it? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You know what's an interesting uh, fact that I Googled? I was just really curious about. Yeah. What's like the average earning on, on an average uh, account on OnlyFans? For myself or for no, an no, average person? Aver average OnlyFans account create like... Oh, I hour. don't know. I would guess there's such a range of people. Like you could be earning a grand and you could be earning 250 grand a month. Um, I would say the average is between, I'd say between five and 10,000 is the average what someone earns. That's crazy. Because my, my initial thought was about 1.5 to, to five maybe, right? Okay. It's $500 a month. That's the average earning account on OnlyFans. It's oh $500 my God. a month. Um, and I don't know why you said, by the way, the numbers that you said, and I thought it was obviously a lot higher yes. as well, because me and you are in this world and we don't really pay attention. We don't see these accounts are doing no. like $200. There, yeah, there's accounts opening every single day. And myself, I've got a lot of girls that sort of come to me and say, oh yeah, can I have some help with OnlyFans and so on? And all these girls have now turned into successful girls earning between five to 10,000. So that's why I sort of Love to Thought talk so. about that. Love to talk about that as well because um, we have some other um, guests coming, but nobody's kind of doing what you're doing. I'd love to uh, share that as well mm -hmm. uh, on kind of how you're helping other creators as mm -hmm. well. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that fact there was just it was mind blowing. But it's kind of the same as anything, right? Like mm -hmm. it's the same as like going to university. Out of the thirty people in the classroom, probably one of them or two of them will actually get the job that they want. Yes, right? yeah. So the averages are always quite low. Um, but cool. Okay, so. Um, if you don't mind, because uh, I'm sure so many people are obviously curious about kind of uh, your earnings and mm -hmm. kind of where you are now. Um, you're massive into your cars, which I absolutely yes. love. Um, you love jet skiing as well. Yes. You love traveling. So the lifestyle is, you know, incredible. And obviously you need to be able to afford that. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm sure probably a lot of people are curious about your earnings. Mm -hmm. um, what could you tell us? How's I would looking? say, as everyone may or may not know, like, as in any job in any industry, it's always up and down. Like you could, the thing with OnlyFans is you, the more money you're making, the more you can drop. Like if, for example, February, the month that we're in now, you've got three less days. And that means three less days of money, which means if you wanna make the same amount as January, you've got to make more of a daily target to try and hit the same as last month. And people, when they earn less money and when there's a recession, like 
you've got to then lower your pricing or keep it the same, but then you've got less buyers and less people to have fun with. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's always up and down. However, the more you're making, rather than dropping like $20, you mm. could drop 20 grand. Mm. So one month you could make 60K, the next you could drop to 40K. Do you feel as if your lifestyle, I mean, of course your lifestyle has changed, right? I mean, yes. I, I, as I'm asking it, I'm thinking like, that's a silly question because I yeah. get that all the time. And it's like, well, obviously like you want to have fun. Yeah. Like the reason why we make money is so we can do the fun yeah. things that we always wanted. Yeah. Um, but here's a question, which is kind of not related to OF, or, mm-hmm. but just curious, like you as an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. um, what's your thoughts on kind of, being wealthy or rich however you want to call it I, I don't class myself that no um, right I'm sure yeah, you, I, yeah. everyone I speak to yeah I know, wants to, I, know. Right? I get it but it's like um what do you think is like the best part about making this amount of money you know what are the, what are the biggest benefits that you get I would say it is just the opportunity of being able to do more and have more freedom mm. um it's the fact of people choose to be self-employed so they can have more freedom and money gives you that freedom. If you want to take that holiday to Thailand or go to Dubai, like you can do that. Um, and you can enjoy the fun things when you get there and you can stay in nice hotels. Like I never thought that I'd get to the position that I'm in now. I didn't sit there driving my Fiesta and my Mini thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to have an SVR and an R8 later. Like I would never have thought that. Um, and I think when you just sort of push and try hard, you're not intending on ever getting there. You're just on your own little road to hopefully success at the end. Mm-hmm. And there's always that next thing that you mentioned yes. earlier, right? You hit one master and you're like, it would be nice if I could get this Yes, car. <laughs> yes, yes. And how did you get into cars, buddy? Have you always been into cars? Um, I would say I've always been into cars. I've always had quite a few friends that have enjoyed cars. And I was always sort of going to little car things when I was probably between like 15 and 17 mm-hmm. um but family aren't into cars nothing like that okay. it is just friends, friends. and myself yeah. yeah you know it's crazy and we spoke kind of um off camera with uh, with ben actually um for for context this is going to be the maddest thing by the way because like the biggest crossover in this, <laughs> in this online space me and you have actually kind of known each other yes. for I don't even know how long. We basically grew up in pretty much the same yes. area. And obviously your other half, Josh, like, yes. um, yeah, me and him have been amazing friends since God knows how long. Um, and I remember actually going to a car meet and I think it was whether your R, right? No, it was a, it was a baby blue SVR I think yes. you had, right? Yes. I remember seeing that, yeah. yes. uh, which is just mad, which was like, I don't God knows how many years, yeah, like five you, years ago. You would have never have thought that, I don't know how people's paths can cross yeah, like yeah, later yeah. in life. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so yeah, I mean, ju- just really, really quickly, because I'm sure people are curious. I mean, I'm curious. Uh, what cars have you had? And um, yeah. So I had, when I first obviously started getting a little bit of money at, I would say sort of the 2018 mark, I bought myself, I think it was a like a Q3, something like that. Mm. Um, and that was like 20 grand. And I was only 19 at the time. So that was quite a lot of money um, because that was all I had. I wasn't, I lived at home and I sort of just put everything into that little pot of car. <laughs> um, and then... And that I was your I, first big purchase, by the way. I'm yes, that was my yeah? first cool, big purchase, cool. yeah. Um, and then I went from the Q3 to a Range Rover Sport. Loved that. Really, really nice. Um, but obviously it was lacking the speed. So I went to buy an SVR. <laughs> However, cool. I would have got it earlier, but I couldn't insure it. Like, right. that's one thing that comes with obviously having nice things at a young age is it comes with a large insurance bill so um, which is really not great um <laughs> how much was it by the way the um the insurance on the svr was nine thousand a year which is really horrible yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> it's disgusting yeah. it's not nice um and then i had a obviously r8 gt4s and so on um super fun um, yeah. And you recently raffled your R8 Yeah, well. I raffled my R8 probably about two, three weeks ago now. That is crazy. Yeah. I remember seeing your story. Somebody won it. Do you mind sharing the story? Yeah. So someone won my Audi R8 for, I think it was £1.98, <laughs> uh, which is fabulous. Um, but yeah, they won that. And um, it was really nice to hear them on the phone, to be fair. They said about um, how they've obviously never had anything like that before and um, it was really nice to hear how sort of not life changing, but how amazing it was for someone to receive that. Um, yeah, it, it, it was nice. Have you ever like won anything like that before? 
No, no, no I've never really won anything. I've never really like entered competitions neither, just yeah. because like, I like the idea like when you see like someone ring on the phone, like when I'm in the car, it's like Kiss are giving away 65,000 pounds. I'm like, oh, I'd love to get that. Yeah. But I know they wouldn't ring me. <laughs> yeah, just a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, I'm just really unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So going back to the, um, the OnlyFans and kind of staying mm -hmm. on, on, on track for that. Um, I'd love to uh, go a bit more into the behind the scenes of OnlyFans world, right? Mm -hmm. I know, I'm, I'm sure, I know I mentioned earlier that maybe some people that are watching this don't know what OnlyFans is. I, I take it back. I'm sure everyone knows what OnlyFans is by this point, right? Um, and of course, you do still technically have two sides of OnlyFans, which is one, the bloggers, the yes. behind the scenes musicians and yes. all this stuff. I would probably go as far as saying 90, if not 95% of the content is explicit. Yeah, I'd say a good 95. Yeah. yeah. Um, so first of all, actually, what kind of content do you create? Um, if people are curious. At the start of OnlyFans, like I said, it was very, very tame. Um, and then as you sort of get a bit deeper, you sort of think, oh, well, what's the point in maybe taking that off and maybe taking this off? And then once you're actually confident within yourself, because it does take a while, like the same as some people might not be confident to walk into a bar by themselves. Like it takes a while once you start doing something to actually feel confident and good about doing it yourself mm -hmm. um and then yeah it slowly sort of took its toll and then it went down the line of just doing everything and was it kind of a gradual increase not only in confidence but then also kind of earnings Did yes that kind of help as well yes yeah. um so obviously you don't have to do explicit to earn good money at all um but obviously it does help <laughs> so um yeah it does help if you do more explicit and like customs and stuff like people ask for a certain thing and if you don't do the full yeah. shebang you probably can't give it to them and it is enjoyable for myself mm -hmm. to be giving someone what they want what they're asking for yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it just gives you a wider range of things to sell yes and right? uh, things to monetize um okay cool um yeah in terms of content i think there's a lot to talk about i think this one is an interesting one because i'm sure um I remember I've done a, I've done a podcast like where I, I've been, uh, you know people asking me questions and yes. one of the uh, most common questions that I always get is like what's the craziest customs that like your models get? Yes. Um, if you don't mind. No, that's <laughs> yeah. fine. Like with customs, they're so um, some of them are really random and some of them are really common. Um, foot fetishes is one of the most common customs. Yeah. Like I would honestly say, like six out of 10 blokes like feet and they might not know they like feet until you see a nice foot like you might not know um so i'd say that's one really common custom but some really random ones are like things like spy cameras and stuff which is a bit creepy but like if that floats your boat then fine um a lot of guys have a thing for like hair like hair on your head yeah. like they like long hair yeah. and like red lipstick and stuff like that which is a bit odd again mm. but um, yeah, I have had some like weird customs, like having to sort of sit in a bath of like slime. And there was one I've not where, had that one before. no, it's not very nice. And there was one where they asked to, I, I wasn't too keen on this one, where um, you had to actually get on all fours and like moo like a cow. And they wanted your like boobs to be like your udders. And I was just like, oh my God, really? But obviously them? you can say no, yeah, yeah. but it's just like, give them a price and if they want to pay it then fine but <laughs> it's not that's not really turning me on and how much are we talking in terms of uh figures like for a, for a custom kind of what's been the highest that you ever charged for a custom the highest i've ever charged for a custom was five thousand wow. pounds which i don't know the conversion rate right now but i think it would probably be about like 5.8 close to dollars 6, yeah dollars. close to six yeah um just because it for me it's all about doing it like how quick do you want it what is it how explicit is it like do you want my face in it because i don't i don't use my face in explicit videos mm -hmm. um anything down there is that area it's mm -hmm. not my face isn't included unless you want to pay that extra for it mm -hmm. um yeah and i think talking about customs right mm. which is where majority of the money comes from yes right? And I think this is where the biggest misconception happens. Mm -hmm. uh, people outside of OF, this is. Mm -hmm. People, kind of what I mentioned earlier, which is, oh, these girls are probably just taking a couple of photos, a couple of videos, post it on OF, and they just make all this money. Yeah. But we just spoke here that 
most of the money like 80 percent yes around yeah most most accounts comes from the customs and, yes. and in the dms yeah and i mean it's in the word it's a custom video where yeah. you have to take the time out of your day and effort sometimes yeah. you have to go and get props and yeah this exactly and that, right um so talk to me about kind of what is your typical day-to-day look like um in terms of work obviously your holiday yes. is a different thing but i'm assuming most of it is kind of work with yeah it is it is mainly work so say on a day-to-day i'd obviously get up shower and so on and then it more so go into doing my messages sort of straight away in the morning sometimes i'd even get up at like half five six a.m mm-hmm. just to speak to them guys that are wanting to chat before work um because not everyone comes on in the evening not everyone yeah. has that time maybe they want to talk to you before they start their day um so that's that's again what you've sort of got to do um and you're sort of catching them not like fish but like you're you're catching them in the morning when they a lot of guys are horny yeah. and like I don't know you could get turned on yourself <laughs> so um yeah in the morning sort of messaging and so on and then you'd have like either a list of customs you might need to do or you might want to send out a pay to view which you can either do to all your subscribers or you could do it to like your top spenders or something like that um because a lot of guys are into different things mm-hmm. like if you're doing something that involves toys or whatever quite a lot of guys actually don't like toys mm. so if you're sending it to everyone like there might be 40 percent that might be like oh i don't actually like that and maybe unsubscribe and or... maybe unsubscribe just because of that one video yeah and again this is one of those things that a lot of people don't necessarily look into because whenever i go on these podcasts and i explain the kind of behind the scenes on what typically goes on mm-hmm. A lot of the guys that are like, you know, asking me these questions is like, there's a whole business behind it. Yeah. I'm like, well, duh. Yeah. This money doesn't appear from from, from thin nowhere. Air, yeah. Right? And I think it's just, just these misconceptions that people think that it's super, super easy, but yeah. there is so much work behind it. Yeah. Not only that, the social media, right? Because yeah. I think, and again, somebody else that I've spoken to, one of my clients who's actually a full on porn star. Uh huh with that they get paid there and then on the job and that is it they don't have to bring traffic with of it's completely a different story right yeah Um, so talk to us about kind of your marketing and just social media how the good the bad what have you learned yeah you have to with OnlyFans, you have to have the traffic there like some people say yes you don't need social media and you can do it without your face in it yes you can but bloody hell it'd be extremely hard like i've obviously done it from my name like bronte is my name it's not a stage name it's my name um which maybe down the line if i chose to do any fans now i might have changed that just due to sort of Brands, yeah. yeah and strange things happening in the past um but yeah a lot of a lot of it is all traffic if you don't have the traffic there you're not going to make money so you do have to be active on social media that be twitter tiktok reddit instagram some people use facebook i don't personally use facebook but um yeah tiktok's a massive one um as well as twitter as well because twitter doesn't have any limits you can post what you like on there so if you want to post a full-on clip of you having sex then you can do that go for it yeah elon musk loves it yeah <laughs> love it. it. <laughs> um but with that for example you have to remember that some people might not know anything you post on twitter if your account is public the same with reddit it goes on google images like and you and you've you just yeah and you've got to be okay with that um so yeah it, it depends what you want to post on social media like with my instagram i find my instagram is obviously very different to my TikTok and my twitter which are very work-based and glamour and sexiness whereas instagram i try and give a bit of my real life with cars and holidays as well as oh yeah look what i've just bought and oh yeah here's me at a shoot and oh do you want to come on my line because i'm horny do you mm-hmm. know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah do you remember that meme i think this was probably last year or two years ago where it's like four pictures and it says like linkedin instagram tinder and i think it was like twitter maybe yeah and every photo is like the same person but like in a different pose and like tinder is like all sexy yeah Yeah. instagram's like flexing their lifestyle i mean i know it's a joke and a meme but like genuinely that is what social media is like yeah it is especially when you're creating content like Mm -hmm. i think you mentioned like on twitter you can get away with pretty much anything yeah TikTok, you got to be very, very yeah. careful. You've got TikTok, you've sort of got to ride the wave as such. Like if there's a trend that's doing it, do it and try and portray what you want to portray, but well enough so that you won't get deleted because the amount of people, including myself, that have lost big TikTok accounts that they've grown from literally zero um, and they've literally lost it overnight when they've had 
I don't know, 300,000 followers and so on. Mm. And they've got to go and start again. And as much as people who are maybe reporting it or people who, I don't know, the TikTok algorithm that remove it, like that is, that's like someone losing their job as such. Like that's like you or going on like suspension or something like that because it's, it's you're losing a section of your work. 100%. Remember when you mentioned about your income fluctuating as well yes. that's a massive one yes right? if, if you lose one of your platforms and have to start again that's why maybe you might drop 10 grand a month mm-hmm. is because some gary from down the road reported you mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. he's found funny but it's clearly not and uh next question was going to be what advice would you give to girls in terms of marketing and social media but better instead i'd rather ask you talk to us about your coaching right mm-hmm. um yeah what, what have you got going on you're helping tons and tons of other only fans creators mm-hmm. um and I've seen the results are absolutely insane. So mm-hmm. yeah, talk to us about that. With coaching, it's something that I started in 2020 when obviously more people started the platform. Um, there was a lot of girls that I was seeing joining the platform and they weren't getting where they wanted to be. Um, and as OnlyFans was growing quicker and quicker, more girls were wanting to join the platform and join the platform. And even before I started doing coaching and released my guide, I was getting a lot of girls say, oh, please, can you help me? Or please, can you do this? And can you tell me some like tips and so on? I was thinking, I just might put it in like a, a notes book and make a file about it because like my knowledge as such, the same as anything, as anyone in any industry, your knowledge to you is what has got you where you are. And that can help someone achieve what you have. Um, so that's what I started. And seeing how well the girls have done, really does satisfy you like it makes you feel that it's what you wanted to achieve from it like it's the coaching isn't about money or anything like that like i think it's like 200 pounds or something um and that gets you a guide that gets you the support room where you can network with other girls which is a massive thing within the industry gets you my personal only fans page for i think it's a month um and ongoing support from me if you need it um and it's just them girls actually coming back to me in a month's time, three months time and saying, oh, I was actually able to take my kids on that holiday or I was like, I was able to buy my kid that Xbox and so on. Like it really does make you feel good. 100%. And remember when I, we spoke earlier about kind of how does it feel to be at the level where we are now in terms of income, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think at least for me, because I do a similar thing where we do coaching. Mm-hmm. For me, the thing that makes me the most happiest isn't like making an extra five grand in a month or mm-hmm. 10 it's getting those messages where saying like, yeah, I've actually been able to like go on this holiday. Like yes. exactly like you said, yeah. that is like one of the best feelings yeah. ever. You get so much more satisfaction. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I think another digit on your bank account. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a number at the end of the day. And as much as we said at the start, like you're doing all these good things and you're able to go on holiday and have nice cars and whatever, like it is all really nice. But those multi-million pound people billionaires and so on like they're no happier than us and as much as people think who maybe feel like they're at the bottom with not a lot of money they think oh i bet they're so much happier like you're not you're not Mm -hmm. any more happier Mm -hmm. you've just got more opportunities in life that that's all you've got you know it's a really really quick interesting story um so if you're watching i'm sure you're probably curious why the fuck do we have so much cash on the table um i'm buying a car but i thought it was a funny prop and uh, i'm sure I'll probably get a couple of comments which is free engagement anyway when i went to go get the cash out um mm-hmm. the lady at my bank um because i was explaining what i'm doing where i'm traveling to what i'm buying with it and i mm-hmm. you know because she just kept asking me i don't i always don't go out of my way to tell people things because no. i just feel horrible when yeah. somebody wasn't able to attain what i have right um, but anyway she kept asking me and i was like <laughs> i was giving her kind of blunt replies but like she kept asking she was really cute like yeah. intrigued yeah and then anyway the more i explained where i'm going what i'm buying how i'm living yeah the more she was like oh your life must be amazing yeah. like i'm she literally said like your life is way better than mine i'm stuck here and literally then i I'd felt like i was obliged to go on like a 10 minute rant about trust me <laughs> we all have problems yeah. we all have issues yeah. my life isn't as perfect yeah and um, a conversation that I normally have with like my friends very frequently it comes up that everybody has problems obviously in mm-hmm. their life, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like the more money you make, just the bigger problems you yeah, have. Yeah, it is, right? yeah. M- more money, more problems, yes. right? 
how do you I, I, this is a question as well I was going to ask earlier do you feel like there's a lot of models that come on the scene and they perhaps make a lot of money and mm -hmm. they're not smart with their finances mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have you noticed that especially yeah, in your coaching yeah like a lot of girls including myself at the start um, I didn't know obviously you could have like a business as such like or anything like that and I thought it was just you earn the money and that's it um, however it's the same as any job the same as anything and the more money you make, the more tax you pay and everything like that. As much as people might not think girls who are on OnlyFans pay tax, like you do, you pay a bloody lot of it. <laughs> and cool. it's not nice. But I would say everyone starting out has issues with the money because you, if you're doing big, big jumps, you're sort of sat there thinking, oh, this is nice. I'll go and buy that bag. I'll, I'll go and take my friends away for the weekend. I'll go and get this, I'll get that. And it's nice, but then... If you sit back, your pot will slowly shrink. And you, yeah, you've got more money coming in. What I found when I was younger, I was spending the money out the pot, but then that pot would fill back up again in a week. So the money you've spent is back again. And until you've got someone that sits you down and says, look how much you've spent, you won't actually realise. And that's how it can be a dangerous game is you are just constantly going around in circles and you won't actually get anywhere like financially, you won't be able to own a house, you won't own this, you won't own that, you would just be constantly stuck. Just constantly spending, getting the same yeah. amount of spending. It's just like you're not actually spend. getting, you feel like you're going here and there, but you're literally just sat here the whole time. <laughs> As, so. what, is there, has there anything been like in your journey that has been like a terrible financial decision? Um, when I had the SVR, a lot of people were drawn to that, as in like they'd hit it, in a in a traffic like in like traffic jam they just hit the car because they'd be staring at it and think oh obviously that's really cool and they'd forget that they've got a break i've had probably they were only like taps but there was there was a good four so five many. yeah there was a good four or five people um that tapped the car and i'm just i just get out and i'm like right that's not ideal but whatever it's fine i'll sort it because at the end of the day it's just car um however i've then gone one time and I wrapped the car due to, I thought the car was a really bad vibe, so I just completely wrapped it because I didn't want to get rid of it. And then as I've gone to sell the car, I've had to pull the wrap off and I've pulled the wrap off and it's pulled the whole paint off. So I've then had to respray the entire car and that was just Cost. a lot of money. So yeah, yeah. that's probably the worst decision, yeah. Did you, because of your cars, you post them on your Instagram. Yeah. Um, do you ever get like recognized and people come up to you? I would like to say like no, out of like, I don't really like to say, that I'm anybody, I'm just a normal girl, do you know what I mean? But I do get messages on OnlyFans and on Instagram saying, oh yeah, I've just seen you here, or I'd be in Starbucks and I've had before two girls come up to me and say, oh, hi Bronte. And me, as in Bronte, I'm like, oh my God, like, who is that? Like thinking, I don't know who you are, but I'm, I'm obviously just gonna be polite and say, oh, hi, but I, I, I can't have a conversation with you because I don't know who you are. <laughs> and you want to be nice and have a conversation, but it does sometimes not freak you out, but you've got to understand how it feels for maybe the person. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I just feel like a normal person. I don't feel like anybody different. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Have you had like a subscriber or a fan come to you and say, oh. I haven't had like a subscriber come up, but I've had them like follow and like take pictures of me driving. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which sometimes if I'm in a good mood, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Mm. But sometimes it's a bit like, right, I'm glad I didn't drive home because that's weird. Mm -hmm. And I think some people don't know that there's a line mm -hmm. and you are still a normal person. Like when I'm driving, I'm not necessarily horny. I'm just mm -hmm. driving. Mm -hmm. So don't follow <laughs> <Turn> me. <out>. <laughs> <laughs> don't follow me and expect that there's going to be something at the end when I stop because there's not. Um, so yeah. I'm sure you've had tons of uh, requests of people saying, oh, let's meet up or yes. let's do that. Yeah, that's that's a very, I'd say a good, a good three to 10 messages a day, yeah. be it on Instagram or OnlyFans. They say, oh, do you do meets or something like that? But that's one, not something you can actually discuss on OnlyFans, you can't say that. And two, like people suggest that because you do OnlyFans and because you portray yourself in a certain way, be it sexual or not, that you do that kind of thing. Which if you do, that's absolutely fine. But me personally, it is online only. Mm -hmm. 
have you had what's been like the craziest uh, amount of money that somebody offered to meet you someone did this was just for a date for like just a dinner date someone offered a hundred thousand pounds it was debatable but then i thought i've seen all these scary films yeah. and i know that i'm going to go there have this date and they're going to do something really scary after yeah, yeah. <laughs> just out of fear like, i just panic um i would say that's been the most non-sexual offer mm -hmm. hundred thousand pounds yeah for a day yeah i should have probably done it but <laughs> <Was you laughs> at the with, time i was, was worried you with josh at the time or? um I think it was a good two, three years ago. So no. No. Okay. Because I was going to say, if you were, then yeah, you should get like four of his boys <laughs> yeah. another table. You, next you to just him. wait over there, and I'll sit here. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's funny. I remember um, watching a video about. I don't even know if I can mention his name because YouTube will probably censor the video. This video is probably going to get censored anyway. Okay. Um, Andrew Tate. He, yes. He he. Um, and actually, I'd love to discuss that. Like okay. your Thoughts and stuff. Um, because I'm sure there'll be a lot of comments saying this and that. <laughs> um, but uh, I remember he said, I think it was a podcast or a video where he mm -hmm. said he'd done something like that, where mm -hmm. one of his uh, models, he, him and like four of his boys were like on one of the table next mm -hmm. to uh, the, the dates, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it was, but I think that was like 20,000. And she actually went on a date. They, they made sure obviously everything's you know, safe. She didn't drink anything. She yes. just ate the food. Um, and then that was it. Yeah. And just made the 20 grand. Um, but anyway, yeah, going on to that, it's interesting. Andrew Tate, what's, yes. your, what's your thoughts on him? I don't know too much about him as such. I've seen a lot of ins and outs. Amazing how well you've done and such an entrepreneur you've turned into. However, there's very ups and downs sort of that have been said about him. Mm -hmm. Be it girls within the industry and out the industry. As you see, as you've said, he does his own stuff that's sort of similarly linked to OnlyFans, did you say? Yeah. Um, whereas then he's had some comments before where he said about how like girls are owned by women, that the guy, girls are owned by men and how a 19 year old girl is more attractive than a 25 year old girl. Yeah. So there's ups and down comments, which like that, obviously I do not agree with, like that's just very odd. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> However, his other life, other than those comments, I don't really know about. Mm -hmm. On like maybe how well he's done or the kind of person that he is. But those comments I've seen. Mm. Controversial to yes. say the least. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever um, actually like sat down and like watched any of his podcasts or any like a long form, like a long form piece of content from Andrew Tate? Or has it only mm. been like clips? No, there, only so? clips I've seen on sort of social media and maybe TikTok. Gotcha, gotcha. But I'd be open to like looking at them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I hear what you're saying. And um, for me, I I agree with everything that you say because he is a controversial guy. Like yeah. he says these things on purpose because yes. because um, he knows that it's going to get shares and mm -hmm. clicks and et cetera. Um, but interesting enough, in person, he does still believe in those things that he say. There's not been a single thing that he said that he doesn't really believe Have in. Have a little like belief in, yeah. Right, right. Um, but I think from a marketing point of view, I completely understand why he does it and yes. what he says. Um, and it's interesting, like even for this, for example, like there's a reason why I put the cash there, not because we needed to, it's just because I know people are going to comment and be yeah. like, oh, yeah. what's going on here? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he's an interesting character, but it's there's two sides, right? One yes. is like, fair enough, you've done an amazing job as an entrepreneur. Yeah. There's a lot of things that if it's true, what's going on? Yeah, um, yeah. If you want my opinion, um, I... I've, I've obviously been watching him for quite some time. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, actually. Um, I remember I spoke to him on Instagram probably like 2019, I want to say. Mm -hmm. A good three, four years ago, way before. He probably had like 10,000 subscribers oh, on YouTube. Okay. One of my friends, Dan Reeves, um, showed me him. And I was mm -hmm. like, at first, I was like, this guy is so jarring. Oh, my God. Like, I hate and this And what guy. did he used to talk about? And um, so no, so well, he used to talk about things similar like that, which yeah. is typically like the relationship between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. That was typically like his conversations, mm -hmm. but also a lot about business, right? The business stuff and all this stuff. And, and he was just, he would always talk about like, his Lambos and his cars, and I have this mansion, you don't, you're a piece of shit, and this and that. Yeah. Um, and like I would just think that he's so like cringy and like mm -hmm. what are you doing? Mm -hmm. But the more I watched, the more I understood that he does that on purpose to piss you off, yeah. so you take action. Yeah. Right? It's a, it's the same really as like TikTok. Like you don't put a really sort of slutty caption for the fun of it. Like you don't necessarily want to put that caption and get hate. Like I don't want to wake up at seven in the morning and see that I've got. 3,000 comments all saying nasty shit. Like, I yeah. don't want to see that. Yeah. Um, however, 
me posting that TikTok has got me that engagement that has got me to my profile. Like, it was in 2021 that I'd done a TikTok. It went viral, viral. Like, I think now it's on, like, 9 million views. Yeah. Like, it done amazing. Yeah. And all it was was a video of me in a dressing gown, and then I shot a gun, like, not obviously a real gun, like my fingers, at the mirror, and then I was in lingerie. I thought it'd get removed, but it's still there. And that then started trending. But I didn't do that out of fun. Yeah. That was purely marketing. marketing yeah. However, on OnlyFans you take lingerie pictures for fun mm -hmm. that, yes, equate to money, mm -hmm. but you're doing it for fun for a festival. And I think, Bronte, I think this is why you're so successful. Mm. Because you have, and everybody that's successful has to have these two sides of them, right? Yeah. One, which is obviously forward thinking about just business, um, I guess a bit of fun here and there, et cetera, et cetera. But then also thinking about the next kind of marketing thing. How can I get myself out yeah. there? Right? You've, you've constantly got to have, what should I do next? What What's going to get me out there? Like the reason as well, like, I, yes, I wrapped my car because I didn't like the color anymore and people kept hitting it. But it was also because I didn't want to change my car, but I thought I need a new image. I need something that's going to sort of not get that attention, but grab people's attention mm. and bring them into my profile and get them more invested into me because the the whole way that people are going to spend money and want to follow you mm -hmm. is if you sort of i don't know grab them a little bit and can i, can I ask one maybe not anymore uh, because of like their financial position but in the early days did you ever feel like there was a sense of pressure where you constantly had to like almost evolve and have like a new image online and like do something different and yeah. bigger than the last time. I, I would say when you're first starting out, like maybe girls coming into it now because there's so many people doing it. Mm. Um, if I came into the industry now, I'd feel a lot more pressured than when I came into it. Um, but when I first came in, because I had only just started off mm. new, there was nothing really that I could do differently. I was just being me each day and posting. Whereas now, there's so many more competitors and so many more girls that are doing better than you or f for me, like they might feel prettier than you or skinnier than you or bigger boobs than you or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you sort of think, you criticize yourself and think, where can I, how can I stand out? Like you are constantly thinking, how can I make myself better? And that's where some people sort of lose it a little bit mm -hmm. and you need to it is good to keep yourself grounded be it a partner or friends mm -hmm. to make you realize that like you don't actually need to do that you don't know need to go and get your boobs done you don't need to go and buy that new bag just mm -hmm. to get engagement mm -hmm. like people will follow you for you You're and right. do you know what i mean yeah very important point very important point and um if you i mean is it cool to talk about kind of the relationship with you and Josh? Yeah, sure. Um, because I'm sure, and again, this is the most common thing that I used to get um, as well, which is, you know, how does it work if the OnlyFans model has another half? Right? Yes. Um, so if you don't mind kind of just explaining to people, I mean, how does it work with you and your other half? At the start, obviously, I haven't been with Josh since the get-go of OnlyFans. Um, so being single and then thinking, I've actually got to have someone that's okay with this. And a lot of guys are very controversial with what they think about OnlyFans. They might be subscribed to someone, but God, they'd never want a girlfriend who does OnlyFans. Like, yeah, I'll be subscribed to someone, but I wouldn't want to have a girlfriend that does OnlyFans. That, fair enough, but it's also a weird mix. Like, if you can subscribe to someone, you're accepting them. So you should accept someone if they do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of thing. Um, so I was worried on that basis that are you going to be okay with what I do for work? Because it isn't something that you just stop because of the money. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You're mm -hmm. not going to stop your 100 grand job even a year because your partner doesn't want you to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so that was obviously a massive worry for myself. And they've got to be okay with you talking to other guys online, be it 6 in the morning or midnight. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Um, and you said it yourself there, it's literally just all online. And it, yes. it's, it's definitely at that point, it is a business. Yeah. Right? Maybe I get it. I think um, I think where the issue would lie in relationships and OnlyFans mm -hmm. is if the other half is doing it behind their back. Yes, completely, right? yeah. And not talking about it. Yeah. Um, or I get it as well in the early stages when the money isn't there and it mm -hmm. maybe doesn't make sense. Yes, right? yeah. I get it. 
But um, so yeah, you was already doing OnlyFans yes. you know, for quite some time at that, that point. Yeah, I'd already been doing it for quite a while. And I believe that Josh, he followed me. I know he followed me beforehand and mm-hmm. um, before we'd obviously started speaking. So I knew that deep down he does know, but you never really know until you get to know someone if they've got an issue with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was obviously hoping that it wouldn't be an issue and it's not, mm-hmm. so. And he's really supportive. I mean, Yeah, completely like really, really supporting. So like, I bring into my photo shoots because I still do obviously glamour shoots and stuff. Um, yeah, I bring him always to them and stuff like that and mm-hmm. make him realize that you are like actually a rock to me like mentally as well. Mm-hmm. Cause you do sort of go a bit funny being in the industry. By yourself too. Yeah. Nah, you guys are a power couple. Even Harry, before you guys got here, he was like, I wish somebody loved me as much as they two love them. <laughs> love each other. Oh, it's so funny, but that's, that's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh mate, I've got you. <laughs> um, cool. I think, I think just the last part then, Bronte, is I guess I don't want to do the whole fucking stereotypical, oh, yeah. well, where do you see yourself in five years, right? Yeah. Um, but obviously you're, you're doing very well already, right? Mm-hmm. And I, and I think OnlyFans, I don't see it going anywhere yeah. um, at all, especially the fact that there's kind of, dip, you know, fan view and kind of Yeah, there's a lot of different other platforms. And I wanted to ask you really quickly about mm-hmm. that. What's your thoughts and opinions on kind of fan view or just competitors to OnlyFans coming about? I um, got sort of uh, approached by fan view um, on being a part of their platform and so on. And obviously, the for me, the offer was better as such because OnlyFans obviously take 20%. Um, However, for me, OnlyFans, you cannot beat the revenue, cannot beat the traffic. Like everyone knows about OnlyFans. Like yes, FanView has got really big now. However, um, there's other platforms as well compared to obviously FanView and OnlyFans. Like there's a good like three, four more. Mm -hmm. Um, But OnlyFans was the first one. It's the same as if you was the first one on YouTube, Mm -hmm. like KSI or whoever, and Mm -hmm. you'll never, you might, but, but 90% you'd probably never get as big as them. Mm-hmm. So that's why I have always stayed on OnlyFans. Um, I think people are more comfortable with putting their details into yeah. a website like OnlyFans because I've yeah. heard it so many times, right? Mm-hmm. It's been around for so long. Yeah. And do you remember as well about OnlyFans particularly? Do you remember when they made that rule about, well, they were going to make yeah. that rule or change? That, that was actually funny enough. The first time that I met Josh was that night. Yeah. We was out on a night out and um, yeah, we then went back home. And uh, I woke up in the morning to probably a good 2,000 messages in a group chat that I was in of everyone just panicking, thinking that we was like essentially made redundant. Like as much as some people would probably hate that word mixed with owning fans, like it is, that was what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, it's literally like losing your job overnight. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was 72 hours, I think it was, that we all thought that was it. Mm-hmm. And then luckily they sort of snatched it back quite quickly and... Was yeah. it, yeah, like three days, three, yeah, four days? Yeah, it was three, like, four oh. days. And then, um, yeah, it was... It, 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 yeah, it did get put back to normal. Because obviously I'm assuming you thought, all right, that, no, well, what's the next then, right? Yeah, like the um, the founder, Tim Stokely, he was the, I think the, one of the main reasons why he didn't really like what OnlyFans had turned into. Where it was going. Or yeah, what it, where it yeah, was what, what the name it had got from itself. Because it was all over the news all the time. Like OnlyFans this, OnlyFans that. Mm. And I don't think, I'm assuming he liked that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, yeah, quite soon after that happened, it got bought, I think it's now owned by a female. Yeah, um, which, company. F- which for a girl is really nice to have mm-hmm. that sort of female back. And I, and I think it's really great. They recently done, um, that wasn't a podcast, but it was like an actual in front of a stage and it was yeah. the CEO, I forgot her name, yeah. uh, with the vice CEO as well. Yeah. And they were just talking about kind of, you know, what does OnlyFans really stand for and yeah. where are they going, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember the person that was like interviewing them like mm-hmm. this, she kept probing with like really questions like, ah, oh, well, how do you feel about loads of people, you know, posting explicit content? Mm-hmm. I could, I could already tell like yeah. what she was trying to get at, yeah. but um, no, the, uh, the CEO, she handled the questions really well. Yeah. So I'm just going to throw like an open ended uh, question at you. Right. So, cause I get this all the time. So I'm curious uh, for an answer from yourself, somebody yeah. who's been in the industry and you've done really well. What's your general thoughts on OnlyFans as a platform just itself? Is it mm-hmm. good? Is it bad that it exists mm-hmm. overall? Mm-hmm. I think one it's amazing that it does exist because obviously it's enabled girls like myself to achieve the life that we have 
Um, secondly, guys get to sort of open up, not a safe space, but maybe fetishes, especially that they don't want to open up to maybe their partner, that maybe they don't want anybody to know, but apart from the person on the end of the phone, do you know what I mean? However, the negative side of it is younger people coming on the platform being 18. Yes, it's 18 plus. However, maybe at 18 for certain people because some people are more, um, what's the word? Not grown up. Mature. Yeah, they're more mature. They sort of think of the circumstances that it may occur later on in life. Or some people just think heat of the moment, let's just do it. Mm -hmm. Those people that are thinking heat of the moment they're not realizing the consequences that may happen later on or think, is it worth me doing this? Or if they're actually in a good job and have endless opportunities in that job, be it in like nursing or in schooling and things like that, is it worth you doing that? Mm -hmm. Like it's not necessarily worth you losing your job over it. Yes, if you're unhappy within your job, step away from it, but it's not worth maybe you losing your job over it. Yeah, it's kind of the same as everything, right? Like even TikTok, for example, you can Uh ask a hundred people about what's your thoughts on TikTok, is it good or bad? Mm -hmm. You'll have mixed opinions. Mm -hmm. Somebody like myself, I mean, even me, I have two sides of it. I think it's a horrible thing because it's just ruining people's minds. But at the same time, I absolutely love it because it makes me a lot of money and I use it for marketing, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's it's interesting. And I I say the same thing, like a lot of misconceptions about me, somebody who runs an agency Mm -hmm. is like, oh, but you're you're the horrible person that is bringing a lot of girls onto the platform that maybe don't want to do it or maybe they do it and then they, you know, have a a second thought opinion, Uh but then it's too late and it's online. It's forever Uh there. Like, at least for me personally, it's literally the opposite. Like, we don't encourage girls to start. We don't even entertain work of a model who's just starting out because it's not worth worth our time. Yeah, completely. so yeah, it depends kind of who you ask, but you can get positives and negatives out of everything. Yeah. And a conversation we were having just earlier about the new CEO of um, of OnlyFans, mm-hmm. and you mentioned about the, the bad is like, yeah, some eight, it's 18 and over, mm-hmm. but sometimes you do get people that, you know, maybe fake it or whatever mm-hmm. and, and get onto the platform. Well, the new CEO, literally, there was a, uh, she went on stage and she spoke pretty much for like half an hour to an hour about how they're ensuring two step uh, two-step authentication zone you have to verify yeah. your id uh-huh. you have to do this 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 and they can making it harder and harder to create an account yes on only fans um so it's all evolving yeah it's all, it's all moving forward um and this is uh, what i was gonna ask like kind of 20 minutes ago again i don't want to sound like cliche but you know where do you see us on five years yeah but you know what do you have in the, in the future do you have um any big projects that you're working on any cool holidays to look forward to anything of that nature me and josh really want to go skiing at the end of the year so we're currently learning to try and ski like ski or snowboard which is seeing yeah. quite hard in the uk <laughs> yeah learning like in the indoors. uk but then we'd go to either like austria or yeah. whatever um so yeah we've got that um i really want to sort of sell the property i'm in or rent it out um which would be really fun I sort of like to build up like a property portfolio. Um, that's something that I really want to get into because um, I really sort of enjoy like interior design and things like that. The other side of being sexual, I actually enjoy normal things as well. So um, yeah, that's jet something. Skiing. Yeah, jet skiing. So do that in the summer as well. Probably go down to Cornwall or something like that. Love that. But, yeah. Love that. Cool. Bronte, um, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank Thank you very much for coming on. Um, Guys, you'll be able to find all of Bronte's links down in the description. Um, Yeah, any final final last words? Subscribe. (laughs) (laughs) I'll leave all the links down below. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.